Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss the IPv6 host configuration. So for illustration, I have shown here that there is a client with her laptop and the laptop needs an IPv6 address to be part of some computer network. Now, this host machine can be configured with IPv6 address using one of the following methods. So the first method is static configuration. Second one is stateful DHCP. And third, stateless address auto configuration. So we will discuss these methods to configure IPv6 address. So the first is the static configuration. So for example, in our case, this there is a router and it has an interface and this can be actually, this can be a computer as well. So what we do in a static case, the clients are assigned IPv6 addresses manually. So what we do, we have IP as IPv6 address in our mind and we just we go there and we configure or give that specific IPv6 address to the client machine. And uh, for example, in case of router, what we do, uh, for example, this is our interface. And for this interface, first we need to go to that particular interface using this command. And then to assign an IPv6 address to this interface, we use this command. And in this command, first is the IPv6 and then address. And whatever IPv6 address we, which we want to assign to that interface, that is there. In this case, you can see this. And then we also need to give the prefix length of that IPv6 address to that interface. So this is how we can statically or we can manually configure the IPv6 address to, to any particular interface of a router. Uh, to a uh, so we can assign them manually to computer as well. The way will be different, but the manually or statically means that address will be permanent until and unless someone else is going to change it. Now, second method is stateful DHCP. In stateful DHCP, actually, that is similar to DHCP in IPv4. So what happens here? The DHCP server actually assigns IPv6 address to client. So for example, in our case, this is, for example, if we say this is DHCP server. So the Client, so for in this case, router, router will make a request and client will send a back IPv6 address. And this DHCP server is going to keep a record of the client and the IPv6 address. So for example, they, they, they uh, record the client information and their IPv6 address, which, which have been assigned to that particular information. So it means the DHCP server is going to keep a record of everything. And this is the reason that we call this is a stateful DHCP. If this is a stateful DHCP, it means there is some state less as well. Yes, there is a state less DHCP server as well, which is not going to keep the record of this client and the IP address which has been assigned to that client. No record keeping in a state less, in a stateful, yes, record keeping is there. But in both, both of the cases, this IPv6 uh, address is assigned dynamically. Now, for example, in this case, in the case of this router interface, what we do, if you want to configure this, we need to go to that particular interface, and then this is a simple command that is IPv6 address and DHCP. So by this, this interface will actually dynamically request for an IPv6 address from DHCP and DHCP will assign an IPv6 address to the interface. Finally is the stateless address auto configuration, Slack. So in this case, actually host learn prefix and prefix length from local router using a protocol that is never discovery protocol. So important is this host machine is going to learn prefix and prefix length. So in, in this uh, uh, method, actually host is going to, sorry, this router is going to announce this part as the prefix and prefix length using a message that is a router advertisement. So router is going to advertise its prefix and prefix length to the host machines. 
so in this way the host machine can give can get the first a 64 bit that is the prefix part of the ipv6 address from this advertisement and sometimes it happens that uh, this this client machine has been initialized it has been started but there is uh, it has not received any router advertisement from the router then actually client machine itself can initiate or can initiate a request for this and for that it uses a message that is that is called router solicitation so what happens this client machine sends a message it is called router solicitation and in response to that router is going to respond with this part the prefix and prefix length to the host machine so in both of the ways uh, are with the help of regular advertisement from the router that is a router advertisement the host can get the uh, prefix and prefix uh, length and this can also request or uh, this can initiate the process with the help of router solicitation but in both of the methods it will get the first part or the 64 bits of ipv6 address but remember we have we need 128 bits for uh, for ipv6 address then how to get the remaining 64 bits now to get the remaining uh, 64 bits this host this host actually locally calculates or randomly generates this remaining 64 bits so these remaining 64 bits are added with this 64 bits and this will be in, in this way we will get this 128 bits so remaining 64 bits which are actually interface id they can be calculated using a method that is eui64 that is extended user interface 64 or those 64 bits can also be randomly generated by the client machine so whatever method they are going to use but they will get the remaining 64 bits of the ipv6 address and with by adding this prefix part and this interface part now the host machine will have the complete ipv6 address remember the important thing is that 64 bits are are actually received from the router and 64 bits are calculated are randomly generated but locally on the client machine and after we have calculated or we have the ipv6 Six address there is a chance that maybe someone else might be using the same IPv6 address so for example there is a client like her and this client is also using the same IPv6 address because accidentally they can match now to verify that there is no duplication in the network they actually uh, uh, use this duplicate address detection method so by using this duplicate address detection, they actually verify that the, that whatever IPv6 address has been calculated by this client, no one else is actually using that IPv6 address. So what they do, actually they announce this program, this lady announced that this is my IPv6 address. Is there someone else who's using the same IPv6 address? And if say for example, this guy is using that IPv6 address, then it will say yes i'm using it by using this duplicate address de detection mechanism if no one replies it means no one else is using that address and she can use the this generated ipv6 address so in this way they finally actually verify uh, that no one else is using that ipv6 address so yes and if finally if you want to configure a router interface to get its IPv6 address using this select method then what we do first we go to that particular interface and then we say IPv6 address auto config so auto config method will actually initiate this process and then they will have the first 64 bits and then they will calculate or randomly generate this 64 bits and finally they can have this ipv6 address that for that particular interface of the router so these three methods the static and the stateful dhcp and stateless address auto configuration these are some of the methods by which we can assign ipv6 addresses to the client machine and i hope we were able to clarify some of the points and uh,
Thank you. Yeah, th in our next video, we will discuss that how to calculate or how this host machine is going to calculate the 64 bits using this EUI64 method. So thank you. See you in some other videos related with IPv6.